Salutations all. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all you ladies out there, past, present, and future. So today uh, we're going to do a little kitchen adventure. I uh, went and looked in the refrigerator to see what I had on hand to make myself a meal. And uh, turns out we're having curry. So <laughs> that's what it's going to be today. Uh, so before we get started, I want to start, I want to say that, you know, you gotta live by a really, a really decent philosophy when it comes to food, anyway. And that's don't knock it till you try it. A lot of people turn their nose up. I understand that the smell of curry; it's very strong. It's very different to a lot of people, um, but it is something delicious that you should absolutely try at least once, at least once, but probably twice. Uh, not all curries are the same. There's so many varieties out there that you just you've got to get in there and try it out so before we get started with the meal I'm gonna go over some of the spices that I'll be using today this is this is how I make my curry uh, I did have a grand opportunity to go and work and live with some magnificent individuals uh, from all over India so I got to have their curry we would eat it at least once a week um, very very delicious stuff that they were producing so this is gonna be a little bit different I've added my own little twist to it There's some ingredients that are gonna go in it that they probably would not use and may shun me for using keep in mind this is also about what I had in the refrigerator so uh, there's gonna be some substitutions that are a touch bit shameful if you want to go that direction um, so let's look at some of the ingredients some of the spices we're gonna start off with that that we're gonna be using today some of the seasonings of course good old salt kosher salt there always some black pepper uh, I use chili powder in mine uh, some bay leaf some paprika all right uh, cloves ginger we've got cumin cinnamon a little cardamom uh, my guys when they would make their curry they would always use the cardamom podge you can use the podge and use ground cardamom you're going for that that flavor I prefer to use the powder because I hate biting into the pods when I am eating my curry all right we've got just straight up curry powder we're gonna get back to this one here in just a second um, we've got coconut milk here a little brown sugar uh, I've also got behind me our fresh ingredients we'll get to those as well uh, of course you know turmeric bang bang so it gives it that vibrant yellow color for this particular curry um, so yes that is a lot right I don't expect people to have this in their house uh, on the regular you know just think about these things when you're out there shopping you want to experience something new you want to try something new start picking up these spices that you've never had before playing around with them in the kitchen when you have some time if you don't have time if you still want to make that curry you can also hit up some of the uh, Asian markets and the Indian markets I mean this is Texas there's a, a vast majority of people all over from all over different places so the grocery stores are going to stock stuff for them maybe not the big chains maybe not a Walmart and Albertsons and stuff like that you may not see these in store uh, on the normal but you can definitely hit up these little markets do not be afraid of them um, here's one brand that I like it's a masala mix this is a pretty old one I've had sitting around for a while uh, and here's another one you can get them for, for everything. It's like any other season. You'll know, have fish ones, they'll have vegetable, uh, vegetarian options, and stuff like that. So you can get a seasoning that's done like that as well. Play around with it, see if you like it. Uh, where I get a lot of my spices, um, I go to these markets. All right, I go to these little bazaars and things. The prices on the spices there, phenomenal. Uh, a lot of the fresh produce that you can get from there, phenomenal. Better prices, better produce. Uh, cilantro mint you know herbs and things like that you just have a better price overall so a uh, real quick example of that would be uh, let's go with the garam masala here all right I'm sorry it's wrapped up but that is a $4.99 price tag you can see right above it there that, that's 16 ounces so that's one pound of garam masala for $4.99 five bucks for that if you go online uh, or even in the store so you go to a Walmart all right so I wrote this down so Walmart had a uh, online they had a 10 ounce uh, container of the garam masala for $7.99 all right that's, you know that's, that's fair it's fair whatever um, they also had a two ounce for $8.27 it was like the really fancy one in the really nice jar and makes you feel like really special uh, ridiculous all right ridiculous now I went on Target as well Target had a seven ounce pack of the garam masala that was $3.29 all right $3.29 for seven ounces versus one pound for five dollars it's really about what you need obviously 
in my household, we're going to eat a lot more curries and things like that than the average person might. Uh, so I'm going to have that, but I do have it available. Uh, I use it. I put it back in the little bottles if I get the little bottles to, to keep it stored. The two markets that I enjoy going to, there is one that's actually not too far from here. It is on uh, Fielder. It's right next door to a restaurant called Tandoor. It's an Indian restaurant. It is outstanding. If you get an opportunity to go by there, please do. They are also doing the takeaway right now, so you don't have to sit in, obviously, with our current situation. Uh, my personal favorite dish there is the uh, lamb shahi korma. It is a lamb cooked in almond, uh, in like an almond milk. It's delicious. Anywho. Moving right along, uh, another market that I like to go to, and I am going to butcher this, I know, uh, it is the Bintan Plaza. Uh, it is also over in Arlington off of Pioneer. It's a massive facility. It's like very orientally decorated. Is that a real word? Anywho, uh, go in there, check it out. The rice selection in that place, uh, we eat a lot of rice here as well, uh, a lot of different, for a lot of different dishes, but the rice selection is off the chain. Uh, massive amounts of rice, very, very cheap. A lot of different cool things to look at, candies, desserts. I mean, just go in there and make a field trip out of it. It'll, you'll, you'll have a good time. Okay, so again, moving along. Um, there's also one more for people that are on the other side of town, uh, maybe closer to you, uh, up 183 at MacArthur, I believe. There's an Indian market over there. Again, outstanding. They do sell more than just uh, food items. You can get clothing. It's a really, really cool place. Go in there, check it out. They do sell, uh, sell hot food in there as well, so you can get a little of a sample. Uh, you might like something and then pick up some spices and go home and knock it out. All right. So again, um, always look in these small markets because when it comes to these types of spices and stuff like that, you can often get a better deal. The African markets as well. I got some dishes that we'll do later on uh, where those will come into play. All right. So some of the other things that we're going to use, like I said, we do a lot of rice here. Uh, I actually had to get a new rice cooker. We murdered ours. That's how often it gets used. I went and I picked up uh, an Instapot. Not sponsored. I went and picked up an Instapot. I, I heard everybody talking about it. It's supposed to be the hot new thing. Um, mine is actually smaller than I thought it was going to be. I'm a little disappointed in that. Uh, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. It gets the job done. I thought it was going to be like a really big crock pot that I could use for magical things. But it's actually not that big. Uh, and as you can see behind me, I probably really don't need more crock pots. Yes, I do. Um, so I got my Instapot though uh, at Walmart. I went online this morning checking out and see what they had for their Instapots, right? So they have a three quart Instapot that runs for $60 and they have an eight quart Instapot that runs for 100 And I did see that now they do have like a big, you know, um, crock pot as well, but ridiculously priced. So I went on Target because, you know, you're supposed to like expect more for less and Target's three quart Instapot is $79 their eight quart Instapot is $119 I went to this little gym that I love uh, thank you Melissa Nelson for uh, turning me on to this place it is called dirt cheap okay dirt cheap there's one off of 183 in industrial there's another off of roof snow uh, for people in that part of town it's just one of those places where things go to kind of die or they're already dead Eh, either way, they got a lot of cheap stuff. They've got clothing, they've got, I mean, just randomness all over the place. Each store is going to have something different. They're, they're a franchise, but they're going to have different stuff. Anyway, I bought that Instapot right there, 40 bucks. okay? $40. The box was a little bit damaged, but it was brand new, still wrapped in its plastic and things like that. So for some broken cardboard, which ended up going into the fire pit anyway, I got a $40 Instapot. Please, if you look to get one, go to Dirt Cheap, see what they've got. Find those kind of resale places uh, and save yourself some money, all right? This is better than $80. All right, so we got the spices out of the way. Uh, we've got the equipment hash top part out of the way. Now let's get into the other aspects of this dish. Now, I've told you I've got the onion in the back there. I've got some onion left over. I had some cilantro left over from another meal. Some chicken thighs thawed. I'm using thighs for this one. Uh, I'm going to save the half the pack, and you'll see when we get to it. Uh, I know one of the biggest problems that I have, even though I do this all day, is planning things out when it's time to come home. You know, we either don't pull things out of the freezer, or we make something, we have leftovers. It's like, what are we going to do with all of that? Um, I get it. I get it working parent like a lot of you out there by the time we get home from school and karate and this that and the other it's like man what are we going to do so you got to start planning ahead you know spend a little extra time 
on the weekend deciding what you are going to make throughout the week. This is going to save you money when it comes to grocery shopping and it's also going to save you time and effort when you're coming to, to put together these meals. All right. So as you see when we get into the chicken, I'm not going to use all of that chicken that's in this pack because again it is just me and my furry friend here and he's not getting any. So we're going to save half of this chicken and then maybe like, you know, Wednesday or something, I'll take the other half of the chicken. I've got some bell peppers in there and we'll make fajitas. Yeah, all right. So again, I take that. It serves dual purposes. I'm not going to let any of it go to waste, and I'm not having to cook more than I need just so that it doesn't go to waste. So boom, we've already planned the next meal for that chicken. All right, moving right along, let's get into the preparation part of this curry. All right. All right, we're going to get started on the uh, prep side of this. So this is that leftover onion that I had. Just a simple straightforward onion you can see if I cut it in half I cut all my onions this way hey whatever works for you uh, for this particular dish I like to julienne mine leave them in longer strips um, so something I thought I would tell everybody about everybody always wonders like you see on TV or you see us at work oh my gosh they cut so fast they move so fast well yeah we do it all day um, you get used to it you learn from your mistakes but something to think about too when you're in the kitchen if you ever watch you know see a little 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 curl there curl on those fingers down that's that's why we're able to do what we do as you can see with that the fingers turned down when the knife is on the back of my hand there uh you know i'm not turning in even if i slip i've got the thumb tucked in there is a reason that that particular claw method if you will is taught and it is for safety it's the reason that we hold our hands this way uh it also helps you control how thick you can or cutting something as well you know you've got a little stop guard there so you know practice that also of course having a sharp knife i sharpen my knives uh at least once a week once every two weeks or so depending on whether or not they're at home or at work but uh anywho all right so let's move on with that get this onion cut up for you real quick Cool beans. All right, get that in our little container up here. Now, if you remember, I said there was going to be some substitutions that uh, are a little bit shameful, <laughs> and in that, I meant that normally for this dish, I would use tomatoes that I would cut into large chunks, and that is the base of this stew, if you will, of this curry: the onions and the tomatoes. It, the tomatoes are going to add uh, liquid to the dish. They are going to add some texture, the acid, and things like that. Sadly, the tomatoes that I had uh, were pure basura. They were they're they're out in the compost. They were just not good for cooking. However, from my pasta the other day, I have some marinara left over. You're like marinara, bro. What are you doing? Yeah, we're gonna make this work. We're gonna turn that into the, our tomato base for this curry. All right. All right. Next item up is the jalapeno. As I said before, curries do not have to be hot. I mean, you know, it's up to you. You can add as much or as little as you like to the dish. You can use fresh. You can use dry. I use the whole shabanga bang. Uh, as you know, it is the pith that makes the jalapeno hot. It's what gives it its heat. That's with all of your peppers. So I do the whole thing, seeds and all. Um, forgive me. It is what it is. Uh, sometimes if it's not enough, I might add a little cayenne or even some crushed red pepper to the dish. Uh, but this should be fine. The little one's not here, so I don't have to worry about anything being too hot. This, Max, I'm sorry, you can't have any. All right, let's get this in our dish as well. All right, next up, I'm going to go ahead and get the cilantro chopped up and out of the way so that we can get on to our chicken. Grab a little dish here. Oh, Ranger Sunday Bowl, you're so versatile. What would we be without you? So you can see, I'm rolling it up. It makes it easier to cut down. I like a lot as well. Rough chop that. And put it in the helmet of a team I do not support. Oh, did I say that out loud? Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. Diamondbacks all day. All right. Along from that, make sure we get it all because we do not waste. To do this dish, um, this like today I'm using boneless chicken thighs. It's just what I had. It was available already, thawed out for me. Um, you do it bone in chicken, you know, any way that you like. At the end of the day, it is your creation. 
All right, I'm gonna grab a glove real quick. Uh, just to keep the chicken from getting on everything else. You know, we use our hands a lot. You wanna be mindful of what you're doing in the kitchen as far as cleanliness, not putting chicken juice all over everything that you touch. All right, so here's my bag of chicken, my leftover chicken thighs from another time. And like I said before, I'm only gonna use half of this for this particular dish, and then the rest of it, we're gonna go ahead and turn into fajitas this week. So let's get a couple of these pieces out of here. Eventually I will do some videos too where we, you know, break down the chicken, um, show you how to make your own boneless chicken thighs. Uh, how to get your chicken breasts, and you know, all the little pieces that we love, and show you the, the difference in cost when you do it yourself. All right. All right. So, boneless chicken thighs. I'm going to leave them as is. I don't want to cut them too thin, I don't want them to fall apart. Uh, so, something too, you know, a little added information, just a little extra credit, if you will. Uh, with this type of food, with this type of cuisine, and, and a lot of cuisine all over the world, you know, all of these different spices, all the different stuff that we talked about that can go into a curry, it's not just about the fact that these particular ingredients taste good or taste good together. Uh, a lot of this food is about healing the body, about taking care of the body. I mean, think of some of the ingredients that go into it. You know, you've got ginger, which is an anti-inflammatory. It can help with morning sickness and period pains. You've got turmeric, which can help uh, prevent Alzheimer's and heart disease and uh, with the sim helps with the symptoms of arthritis, things like that. So there's a lot more behind why these things get used, uh, why these different ingredients get used, other than the fact that they taste good uh, and they happen to taste really good all together. So, all right, super easy, super quick. Like I said, we don't have the tomatoes. That's the only thing that's missing. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward and start putting this uh, delicious curry together. All right, let's get into the actual cooking of this dish. Preps out of the way. We've got the rice cooking in the background in our nifty difty little Instapot. And I mean, like, let's make the house smell good. I mean, let's get into it, right? All right, I'm gonna hit the pan. I got my trusted, another one of my favorite dishes in my house uh, is my little electric skillet here. We got this set on a medium heat. Uh, we don't really wanna cook this fast. You don't wanna turn it all the way up and just, it's just not necessary. This is something that you wanna build those flavors. We wanna layer all of this stuff and build these magnificent flavors. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my garlic. <clears throat> Let me not use my giant work spatula. Let me get something that's a little more uh, in line with everybody. All right, look. All right. Start off with our garlic, a little more for me. I'm heavy on the garlic in this house. So that right there is a teaspoon, about a teaspoon-ish. Heaping teaspoon, let's call it that. Makes me feel good inside. All right, heaping teaspoon of garlic. We'll just let that cook slow. We want to get a little color on this. You'll hear terms people say, you know, um, you're going to caramelize something, or you're going to sweat that, you're going to sweat that out. So the, the, what they say, what they mean when they say that, by moving an item around in the pan, the heat, uh, you cause all of the natural moisture in it to start being released, and in essence, it basically steams itself with its own juices. So if you're doing onions and you keep moving around the pan and you're wondering why they're not getting any color, that is why. Caramelizing, um, just like it sounds, caramel. Caramel is burnt sugar, so what happens is the natural sugars get released from the items that you're cooking, carrots, onions, just whatever. The natural sugars in it will come out and they'll start to burn and they give you that delicious color, that smell, and that wonderful flavor of caramelized item. So remember, sweat it, move it around, no color. Let it sit, do its thing, gonna get some color, gonna get a completely different flavor profile from it as well. So we're gonna let this go just a little bit. Remember, we're layering, we're building these flavors. So we're not gonna throw everything in the pan at the same time. We want some of these items to be cooked at different points for that flavor. 
All right, give this about another 30, 45 seconds, and then we're going to go in with our onion. Yeah, that was 30, 30 seconds in my head. So good. Remember we talked about that caramelized point? So I'm going to stir it around a little bit to get some of that garlic off the bottom because we don't want to burn it. But we want to let this onion sit and do its thing. A little industry secret uh, that will probably get me in trouble in the future if I ever blow up. I'm sure somebody will want to sue me behind it. But Alright, so I used to work at a place called Johnny Carino's. And every day before they open the doors, they do what is called a garlic walk. So they get a little cast iron pan and they heat it up on the fire until it's just ridiculously hot. Take a huge heap of garlic and put the garlic in there. Throw a few pieces of ice into it as well. And then walk around the entire restaurant with this garlic steam just going everywhere. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but I believe that cooking garlic is one of the most delicious smells on this planet. Uh, when it comes to food. But they do that because the smell of garlic actually entices your appetite. It, it makes you crave something to eat. So as soon as you walk in and you're like, oh my gosh, they've been cooking all day. It smells so good in here. I am hungry. But in reality, it's those psychological tricks that they use. That's science. Alright, letting this go. Maybe, maybe you can and can't tell. It is starting to get a little color on it. You get a little of that steam going. And let it sit and do its thing for a little bit more. Once we get, oh, you see my little my little buddy down there? Because Dad can't come in the kitchen without him being here. I have to be supervised. I'm not trustworthy. Uh, so once we get the color on, that would be the point where I would throw my tomatoes in and let that start to cook down as well. Uh, like I said before, we don't have tomatoes. So we're going to have to do without. We're going to do it a little bit different. And because I don't have the tomatoes, I've actually got a little chicken broth. I don't know if I mentioned that before. I've got a little chicken broth set aside to add a little, not just the flavor, but also moisture if there is not enough. Your curry can be as soupy or as porridgey, as thick as you like. It's really on you. Um, it's a dish that I like to get in a little heavy on the liquid and then let that cook down and reduce. It really concentrates and makes those flavors pop for you. If you don't have time, once you have all the liquid in and you're in a pinch, you can make what we call a slurry, which is a mixture of cornstarch and water. Uh, like, you know, we used to do like paper mache back in the day, like that really cheap paste that we would make. All right, same principle. You'll, you'll do the cold water and cornstarch, we'll add that in, and it'll thicken it up. We'll, we'll talk about that later on, though. All right. Onions are starting to get that delicious color to them. So before I go in with my sauce, like I said, we're not doing the tomatoes today. Once I would add the tomatoes, I would start going ahead and adding my spices to that before I add my protein. So let's go in with some of our seasonings. Start with a little bit of salt over here. Call that about a teaspoon and a half of salt. Remember, we can always add, we cannot take away. We can always add, we cannot take away. But we will cover some instances where we add too much and we have to go back and fix it. We will go over some of those things as well. Alright, so we've got our salt in. Let's go ahead and follow it up with its best mate. A little pepper. Don't make me lie and tell you how much pepper I think that is. I really, I don't know. It just feels right. Let's go with it. Let's go with it. Alright, now to mine I add a little chili powder. You're like, Lucky, why are you adding all these spices and there's not really any liquid in there? Well, cooking the spices and cooking your herbs, even seeds when you're using seeds, it actually helps with that flavor as well. <coughs> Forgive me. All right, a little paprika going in there. Sometimes I'll use a little smoked paprika just to add that kick to it. I mean, it's super sexy. Super sexy. All right, going in with our cardamom. Just a touch of the cardamom. It's a really actually strong, strong flavor. The whole dish is strong, but I go really light with the cardamom. A little bit of cinnamon. 
wish you guys could smell this right now. Some cumin going in there. Where you at, Ginger? Where you at? Uh, let's hit the ginger. Make sure that also when you're cooking, you know, you want to taste your food throughout the entire process. Through the entire process. Even if it's a dish that you've made 101 plus 1 times, things change. Uh, the veggies, you know, might have a different flavor or that, you know, spice that you got. Maybe it's just a little off. That batch is just a little bit off. Um, taste it, taste it, taste it throughout. Taste it throughout, okay? Never make a dish and send it to a table <coughs> when you haven't tasted the product. Alright, where do we leave off? Alright, so we are done with that there. Good color on that. We're going to hit it with a few cloves, just a few. Ground clove works as well, so you don't have to worry about chomping on those. Got three little cloves in there. And I'm going to go ahead and throw my bay leaf in as well, right now. Alright, one bay leaf in. Now, we're going to go in with that leftover tomato sauce. That leftover marinara. And because we're using the marinara as a substitute, we definitely want to make sure that we're tasting. So we can get it right. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Medium heat. Alright, so as you can see, it's really thick already. So we're going to thin that out a bit with our chicken broth. The cup right there. Cup and change. And let that heat up slow. That marinara was cold going in. here so that way we have enough liquid to properly cook it back down and get the flavors we're looking for so I would say that's about two cups of bra roughly all right while we bring that up to temp I'm gonna go on with my curry my curry powder That's about two big old tablespoons of curry powder. Mm, love that smell, baby. Love that smell. So when the guys that I worked with would make this, uh, <laughs> they would make it, they would make rice, they would make lentils, they would make this delicious little cucumber salad that goes with this dish, cucumber salad and yogurt, uh, which is funny because if you know me, those are two things on the list of things that I do not typically eat, but it just really works with this meal. Like It just works. So we would do the lentils, like I said, the cucumber salad with carrots and onion in it, and then we would all gather and watch a show called India's Ideal Star, which is like their version of American Idol. Highly entertaining. Look it up on the internet. Just check it out. It's different. Um, but it's it's just an awesome little show. I really enjoyed it. And that and we would watch cricket. I, I have a new appreciation for that sport. Didn't really understand it before. Uh, actually a blast. So check that out. India's Ideal Star. Check out a cricket game. Uh, you know, get outside of your box, baby. See what the rest of the world is doing. You know what I mean? All right, so we got that up to temp. We're going to turn it down a little bit. We want it to simmer, not boil. Simmer, not boil. And then we're going to go in with our chicken and our jalapenos and whatever left is left of the onions there in our oversized Tupperware container. Oh, baby. Now, a lot of times... Um, you want to take, actually, if you want to be traditional about it, you'll actually season up your chicken, brown it off or sear it off in the pan first, pull it out, um, then start this process. But we're doing the quick and easy lazy way in a dish that already has a lot of moving parts. Oh, man. All right. 
we're gonna let this cook down for a bit. We're gonna let it simmer. Uh, about like these are boneless, uh, boneless thighs. So it's really not gonna take very long for the meat to cook through. We got a few minutes left on the rice, so we're gonna let this simmer nice and slow um, for about. 10 minutes and then we're going to add our last piece of ingredients we're going to give it a taste re-season as needed and uh enjoy it, baby right all right be right back all right y'all home stretch home stretch for my family in arizona and cali and everywhere else i did say y'all it just is what it is it's who i am now okay that's who i am now y'all I say y'all and we cook Indian food all right so while we were away uh, the rice finished see I've got a nice little simmer going it's been simmering for about 10 minutes really building those flavors I did a little taste test with my trusty spoon right here uh, I added a little more salt to it a uh, touch more of the turmeric and also a little more cinnamon really trying to cover up remember this is uh, leftover marinara that we're trying to turn into a nice curry sauce so we have to do a little extra to get it there if you are actually making this at home and you're using fresh tomatoes remember that I this is a tomato sauce that's why it's this dark in color I also add chili powder in mine I know when I say chicken curry and we start talking about turmeric immediately you see a yellow curry but just keep in mind of what went into this and this is why it's that color so we're gonna go ahead and finish this off and this is how I like to do it we go in with a little bit of coconut milk nice and easy peasy baby when I do it at work I will actually toast off coconut and add that as well just really pushes that coconut flavor And this is where that brown sugar comes into play. Just a little bit. I just like a little sweet. Just a touch. Alright, that's a that's a pinch. That's a pinch. Okay. If you don't know what a pinch is, then you know I will definitely do some starter videos uh, or consult with your nearest grandparent. Just like a little bit of that brown sugar sweetness. Uh, for me it just complements the heat. It just really adds makes it come together. Let's see here. Get that sugar dust off my fingers. Yep. That's where it's at, baby. That is where it's at. How do you think I forgot? No. Bam! Cilantro. Boom. Get in there. Making a mess. Never go anywhere without your trusty towel. Okay? Learn that from an old space traveler. Let me know if you get that reference. All right, boom, 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 baby. All right, let's turn that heat off. Let that cilantro soak in and do its thing. And do not worry, that will not go to waste at all. Remember, we're doing fajitas uh, in another day or so, so the cilantro will get used for sure. Uh, we might do a cilantro lime rice because we're gonna have light rice left over. Another thing that I like to do in this household. Uh, with leftover rice, we scramble up some nice eggs, throw that into the rice, throw some cheese on top, maybe a little bacon and some sausage. Rice and eggs. Crazy simple. Um, good way to get rid of leftover rice. I grew up on the stuff. My son loves it. Uh, it's just, you know, it is. It's very simple, but it's delicious, you know. All right. Let's put this together, right? How do you get myself a good helping of rice? This is just a normal short grain rice here. Nothing special. Keep in mind too when you when you make your rice, you know, not all rices are created equal. Uh, different grains of different style grains are gonna cook differently, need different water amounts. The texture is gonna be different, whether it be sticky or fluffy and nice and commercial uh, or whatever. So do a little research. So you don't waste your rice. Bam. Here we go, baby. Little curry, little rice. Alright. Miss my little salad. Oh, I wish I had some. This stuff is so delicious. Don't forget about it. And, and that's our curry.
Okay, everybody, uh, before we go and sit and enjoy the fruits of our labors today, I want to start off by first thanking everybody for all of the feedback and support with the first video. Uh, it actually means a lot. As you can see, I am taking that stuff into account. And uh, as it goes on, I hope to continue to improve in these videos and make them more entertaining, maybe a little more educational value as well. Uh, I, I do love to share information, so feel free to ask. Um, you know, hopefully, as I said, this is a long-term thing. We're going to cover a lot of stuff, and I hope that it changes your life in a positive way. All right, so uh, I'm going to try to post a little something with the those markets that we spoke on, some local farmers markets around here as well, um, Fort Worth and the HEB area. I'll try to post some of that stuff for you guys as well, so you can start getting a little bit of a better rate and also support some of these businesses out there as we get back into the swing of things. So let me know how your curry turns out. Um, and yeah, be on a virtual baby. Enjoy.